week one previews and picks. We'll we'll give out just a. Obviously, these are not going to be our best bets, but we'll give a pick on these games. We'll just see how we go. Uh, Thursday night football tomorrow night. We get game one. We get the opening of the uh, of the season. I mean, it's going to be fantastic. I don't know that the game is going to be fantastic, but I know it's going to be good to see the players running out of the tunnels and and getting ready to play a game in the NFL. No delays, no nothing. Yeah, now we didn't have a preseason, which I think is going to make it even more real. But you know, you got Bill O'Brien going back to Arrowhead, where they had a twenty-four to nothing lead in the playoffs last season. And ended up getting beat 51-31. to 31. I believe, if my math serves me correctly, that that is a 51-7 to 7 run by the Chiefs to end the game. Um, and I don't see where a lot has changed, other than I think the Texans are not as good as they were last year, at least talent-wise. Maybe I'm crazy. This Chiefs minus nine looks a little short to me. I'm going to take the Chiefs here. Now, the question is... How much of these teams had to practice? How much tackling have they done? What, you know, how prepared are they? Because I think it could take an offense a little bit of time to get rolling, right? I think one of the biggest issues with the Chiefs last year in that playoff game was they had a bye week the week before, so the offense took a little bit to get rolling. Now, when it did, it absolutely got rolling on that Texans defense. Uh, but I, I kind of see the same thing going here. I think the Chiefs won by, you know, at least two touchdowns. I think this is a big night for them. You know, they get to show the trophy off, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, at Matt jumps in. He said, what's the over-under on ACL tears in week one? I mean, we we already saw an issue with uh, – look, I will say this. Mike Evans already dealing with the soft tissue injury, so he may not be playing this weekend. And Von Miller, of course, with the ankle, like hey, you got all kind of stuff going on already before we even start playing. So, yeah. Uh, tell me your thoughts here. What are you looking for on uh, on Thursday night? I, I I mean I think the Chiefs win this game. I don't think there's any world in which they don't win it, um, unless we see a major injury early, which we just don't want to talk about that. We don't want to see that. Uh, but Deshaun Watson is a real football player. Bill O'Brien is not a terrible coach when it comes to coaching and the X's and O's and on the game. Um, I, I think this is going to look a lot different than the last game because a they're not going to get that big kind of lead, but. Um, I, you know, I think they're, I think it's going to be lower scoring and closer than the last game. Will they keep it under 10? I don't know. That's tough. Lines pretty much nine and a half, nine all the way across the board, depending on what you, what you want to do with it. Um, I wouldn't touch it. If I had to bet it, I would probably take the points. It's the first game. Everybody's going to have some, some flaws. Everybody's going to work out some Kings. This is basically preseason football, but all the starters are going to play the whole game. I'm not expecting magic here. Okay. I'm just, I'm just not. And, and I I think a lot of people are going to, to start off real slow. And with that being said, I think the game's just going to end up a lot closer than we think. You, you might be right about that. Um, I I will say this, Adam jumped in on Periscope. He said, I think there's value in unders and then maybe uh, backdoor covers if the line drops in play at, yeah. I mean, live betting, especially in college football has been the way to go. Uh, well, I've been in college, but this is the pros. These guys are these guys are professionals. If you if you think 9 points is no big deal or short in the pros, you're just insane. You just don't get double digit point spreads in in the NFL. Oh, agreed. Agreed. I mean, you this one opened this one opened at 11 and it's been bet down to 9. Yeah, the other it's been double bet digit. down because in the professional football game Sharps, no, you don't lay double digits to anybody. Agreed. The other one was Baltimore and the Browns, which is yep. the next one up. We, we can go ahead and, and start discussing that one as well. Um, the Browns going to Baltimore, and, you know, it, it opened at 10, and now it's down to, you know, 7.5 in some spots, it, mostly 8, it looks like, across the board. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's more 7.5s popping up than I thought. A lot of people, you know, coming in on the Browns here. Are you are but, you looking at SBR? Yeah, I see fifty four percent of the bets on Baltimore. Do you see Bookmaker? Uh, book. Yeah, I see Bookmaker at at three, but they've got like they. It's just minus one twenty. That's just that's odd. I that I, cannot. No, I don't be right. listen. I can't understand that. I think I you can find odd. this line anywhere from eight to three. I mean, but that's the only three on the board. Yes, um, that's the only three on the board, but it's a, it's available. 
Hold on, I'm I'm looking at bookmaker right now. If you're a Browns hey, guy like no, no, me, no, no, no. it's but it, it that thing came across wrong. They uh they pulled it wrong. It's actually Ravens minus seven and a half at at minus one eleven so over at bookmaker. Went to bookmaker. Yeah, and so I'm, I'm, say, I'm looking that at can't, book. that. Listen, that's just one of those where you just create a new account, you give some business to a new book, and you take their money. Yeah, I mean, if it was minus three, absolutely. Um, but if it if it's seven and a half, mm, uh, tell me. I, I like the Ravens a lot this year, but I don't think they're going to be as dominant as they were last season. Uh, you know the NFL stands for not for long, right? It, so while while Lamar Jackson was kind of the flavor of the week last year, it, remember the Browns were one of the teams that that actually beat up on them. Yep. Early on. And when and when did they do that? Week four five. Who was on the team? I, I don't know what you're wanting me to get. Miles Garrett was on the team. Because <laughs> oh, okay. he wasn't on the team the second time they played. That's right. That's right. Okay. Who was the only person in the league last year that shut Lamar down? Uh, that would he be. Didn't, he didn't come off that left edge. No, no, no. He wants to bootleg. He's bootlegging right, baby. He ain't bootlegging left. I, I'm guessing you're rolling with the Browns here. Because the, the freakiest freak that has ever lived since Bo Jackson is on the left side of that edge. Yes. I, I'm, I'm yes. rolling Browns with you. Give me so. the Browns. Give me the I'm getting over a touchdown in the NFL. That's crazy. Yeah. I think the Ravens are a really good football team. I have them realistically probably being an AFC representative better than my pray church. But I, I love Lamar Jackson. I think this Browns team is going to shock people. I think they actually have an adult in the room. All the hype was last year. All the hype was last year. It's one of those things where we should have pumped the brakes. And then this year is now when we actually should have unleashed the hype train. I think that defense is really good. I think that yeah. this is not a Baker. Baker needs to play good football. Baker can't be bad at football like he has been. If Baker plays good football, the Browns have every bit of a shot to win this game. I think they keep this close. I think so, too. I mean, they, they've got a an adult for a head coach now. Like at Kevin yeah. Savant, and this is not to talk like. But they super had a moron and, for a head coach last year, yeah. and this defense still shut the Ravens down in the first time they played. Yes, you are correct. You are correct. Uh, Corey Weaver jumped in on Facebook, said, if injuries are limited in week one, will we see the preseason go away or reduced in the future? Yeah. Well, it's definitely going to be reduced now. We'll, I, we'll never yeah. get four games of preseason again the rest of our lives. I, I think, I'm okay with that. Yeah. I really want to only because I think we're about to get some really bad football. Well, we're, we're also uh, moving to 17 games next year. So... Yeah, I could I could see him cutting it down by we're, two. We're just going to see really bad football the first four weeks of the season. Yes, I think we are. I think we are. Uh, staying on that 12 p.m. time slot, central time, of course, God's time zone on Sunday, Packers at the Vikings. And this one is sitting currently at the Vikings minus two and a half. Uh, so less than a field goal. And I, at some spots, uh, nope, nope, it's sitting two and a half across the board. And it I opened. Say, I thought it was two and a half across the board. It is now. Yeah, yeah. I, when I wrote it down earlier, it was two and a half or three. Um, but it is. Uh, it's two and a half across the board. It, it opened at three and a half. I, you know, fifty one percent of the tickets on the Packers. Like, what are they seeing that I'm not? Because I yeah, just they're seeing the thirteen and three. They're seeing pissed off Aaron Rodgers. They're seeing you know they're seeing all kinds of stuff. I don't understand. These are it. all storylines, though. They're not actually seeing football. Yeah, that's the thing. Storylines don't equate to wins. I'll go ahead and get. I mean, I, obviously, I'm taking the Vikings minus the two and a half. They are, yes, you know, sixty four percent. I think I saw uh, over the last three years at home um, against the spread. I mean, they. It, this is a good football team, especially in the dome. This is going to be and, the first game where we actually see. I, I heard. I literally. So I listen to a lot of podcasts. Okay, I listen to a lot of NFL podcasts. I listened to a guy today, and um, Packer fan. Big time, big leaf for the last four years. Been listening to a show, Packer fan. Came out today in his picks and said, I'm really getting tired of the Rodgers drama. And you know what that sounds like? Packer fans are preparing for Jordan Love. Yep. And I think that's the smartest thing they can do. This guy's been a diva from day one, and he's been amazing. He's been an unbelievable quarterback. But that dude is an asshole and tough to deal with. You think it's any um, like remarkable thing that they just don't sign free agents at receiver? Just, just, just they just don't do it. You think that's a an organizational decision? 
You think or, it's just or hard it, to get people to want to go to play in Green Bay, but yet they'll come to Cleveland? No, that's. I, I think you're right here. I think you're right. I think they. I think this guy's they an just, asshole. They just don't want to work with him. So I'm rolling Minnesota. The, the, the mistake is always somebody else's. It's never his. You know how I feel about that. You got. It's okay to make mistakes. You have to take personal responsibility. And he's been the reason they've had problems in the past. Not all of them, but when they're his, he needs to own them. And he doesn't. He puts them off on other people, and that makes it to where people don't want to work with you. Yeah. All right. He ran Mike McCarthy out, and all the Packer fans can hate on Mike McCarthy all they want. We about to see was Mike McCarthy the problem? I don't think he was. Was A.A. the problem? Give me the Vikings. I think they're going to whoop their ass. I think so, too. I think so, too. Matt jumped in. He said, my vacuum quit working, so I put a Packer sticker on it. Now it sucks more. Yeah. Uh, Young Ganji said, what about the under 46 on that Green Bay-Minnesota game? that's a really. Yeah, I would like. To, I know that's a short number. That's a real low yeah. number. But I think that's going to be a low scoring game because I just don't trust either one of these offenses yet. I I agree. I think it. I think it'll be. And in the I 40s. think both these defenses are good. Oh yeah, I, I, that's the biggest thing. I think the defenses are really good. I don't trust either offense. I would no. probably roll the under forty six. Now I'm I'm not going to bet it because it's it's it, right there at the number that I would think it would be. It's really tough to hit a a, a professional over under. In the mid forties, it's just hard. Offense has become so much a part of the game. Under forty is tough. Field goal kickers can make it from the fifty fifties now. Yeah. So, so you just get the ball to the forty yard line, and 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 you almost guarantee in three points. That's it's just tough to play defense anymore. I I, I would love to. I, and I think it's actually good. That's the play I would make if I had to make that play as well. Um, but. But that's that's where I think the game's going to finish. It's going to be real close to that. Yeah, I mean that's a that's a twenty four twenty one type of score. Um, yeah, you know, I, and I it think, wouldn't surprise me if neither of these teams see twenty. I, I might agree. That with wouldn't you there. shock me. I mean, a seventeen thirteen kind of ball game, like yeah, yeah. I, I think that's more probable than twenty five twenty five. I agree. I, I think I think I think you got a better shot at this thing not hitting forty than it hitting fifty. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree. Let's move on. Let's talk about the Sunday afternoon game, which I think is going to do absolutely monster ratings on Fox. And that would be the Tampa Bay Bucks traveling to New Orleans, where Tommy Boy is going to be an underdog for the first time in what I mean, what, like 18 years at this point? It's, I mean, it's it's been a long time. No, I think he was a dog against one of those Chiefs games recently. Maybe when they played at at uh at at Airhead. Maybe so. Maybe so. Either way. Uh, this is insane. I mean, this is absolutely insane. And this it's number's getting time. bigger. Oh yeah. I mean, it. Well, no, 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 growing. No. It uh, no, it opened at four and a half. It's down to three and a half now. Uh, okay, I thought I thought it opened at three and a half, and I was about to say you can find it four. We can't anymore. You could this nope. afternoon. It is. It is it four. Three and a half. Three and a half the across board. the board. And it's it's minus one hundred five for the odds. Basically everywhere. Uh, That's total right. is total is sitting at. Uh, anywhere from forty nine to forty nine and a half, uh, which is exactly where it opened. So that's a, that's a number I would go over on. This is this is a big time afternoon game. These two football teams are going to score points. Well, and it's two offensive coaches that love to fling it around. They both you're, got you're weapons. Gonna, if you want to see a dick, dick measuring contest, put Bruce Arians and Sean Payton in a room with two quarterbacks. Yeah, with that, with, with that, two good somebody's quarterbacks. pants are coming down. That's just it's just going to happen. <laughs> um. I, I'll tell you this: like there is so much hype for Tampa Bay right now, um, oh, but it, it is for the Saints too. Everybody in the is. world is picking the Saints to go to the Super Bowl. Yeah, they're all in on you know with Drew Brees last year. They said another, and it, it, it's all the same. You can't say there's more hype on one side than there is on the other. True, true. And if the ticket count were any different, like it, there's 51 percent of the wagers coming in on Tampa Bay. Yeah, it's, um, it's minuscule. It which is tiny. However, it has moved an entire point. So I, I don't know what the money. That's because looks Vegas like. doesn't. I think I think that's because the bookmakers don't want to get too far off of fifty fifty. You might be right about that. They don't care the number. They need fifty fifty on both sides, and if it gets up just a hair, they're just moving because they need to make they need to get money back the other way. I, I will say this: if it uh, if it goes down to three, like I, I doubt you're going to see. Uh, I think you'll see a lot of people betting on the Saints at that point. But either way, I. I'm going to go you on and take give the Saints. Them all, hey, listen, they can lay as many points as they want. If they don't win the football game, they're going to lose a bet. Oh, no. You, you're going to lose that damn ticket because Tommy <laughs> ain't losing game one. All right, so you're rolling, you're rolling with TB, huh? 
When's the last time Tom's lost first game of the season? I, I mean, it, I, has, I'm has it ever happened? I almost say never. I mean, I, I don't know that it's happened in 20 years. I, I, I don't even know if I can look up that stat. I have no idea, but I will say this. Uh, when's the last time that he wasn't actually, you know, playing a game for the Patriots? Oh, okay, but so. this team is this team's <laughs> supposed to be better than the Patriots. I, they're, yeah, they're supposed to be. Um, you know, I'm I'm a roll with the Saints at home. I I like them in this spot. I think uh, I think they've got the culture built a little more. And that's you know, it, could it would it surprise me if Tampa Bay wins this game? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Um, but I'm a roll Saints here. Like I don't have a good feel on this one, one way or another. I, I'm rolling Saints. I I like them in the spot. And you rolling Tampa Bay, right? Rolling Tampa well, Bay yes. plus three and a half. Yes. All right. All right. Uh, let's see. All right. Let's move on and let us discuss uh, a game that I thought was pretty big, and that is the Cardinals at the 49ers. And this one is down to seven points. It is uh, the 49ers minus seven, and it opened at nine. And it is, I mean, Lord, I'm seeing one. Uh, Heritage has got it six and a half now. Uh, Jazz has it six and a half now. I mean, it's it's. It's dropping a lot. The Cardinals did play them close both times last year. People think Kyler Murray's going to take a massive step forward. My question is, what if Kyler Murray takes a step back? What if people can figure him out after one season? And now they, they brought in Hopkins, right? They got weapons for him. They got dudes. But, you know, right. is the Super Bowl loser, you know, slump, is that a real thing? Is that a jinx? And no, it's not a jinx. It's not a jinx. Let me tell you what it is. is Every Super Bowl loser usually loses both their coordinators to other jobs because they true. made the damn Super Bowl. True. And they didn't lose anybody. Okay? Everybody is still there. So there's a reason the Super Bowl loser doesn't make the playoffs all the time. They have a shitload of free agents. They went all in on the season. And so they lose a bunch of guys. And they also lose a bunch of coaches. Okay? True. This team didn't do either. All right. So let me tell you, I made one statement earlier and I was wrong. I'm going to admit I'm wrong. The Denver Broncos are not the Cleveland Browns of 2019. The Arizona Cardinals stink like Cleveland last year. People are talking Kyler Murray for MVP. He's got the third best odds to win MVP. Yeah. Yeah. Are you kidding me? This team is not a great football team. They just threw Hopkins in there, just like Cleveland threw Odell in there with no offseason, no practice, and just all of a sudden it's going to magically work out. I don't think so, Scooter. I will take all the unders on all. I will I will take every bet anybody wants on all the Arizona Cardinals. Yeah, I can bet that. Uh, by the way, Young Ganji said, uh, what team still has fans? Home field advantage is going to be zero these days without fans. Uh, right. I don't. I, I agree with that, by the way. Well, I, I think it's going to be basically zero anyway, because nobody's letting in any more than like twenty thousand people. You're yeah. not going to be able to hear them. It's not going to make a massive difference. Like I, the atmosphere is not going to be there. The difference you know. between sleeping in your own bed as opposed to sleeping in a hotel is nothing for these guys because they're used to sleeping in hotels their entire life. Yeah. So it doesn't. It doesn't go. I don't think home field advantage matters. Basically, the new home field advantage is what would these teams. Uh, record B or, or the number B if it was a neutral site game. And that's that's how the bookmakers are looking at this. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Matt said, I don't see Murray doing much. And then he he corrected me. I I forgot what it was called. It's the sophomore slump. Like that's a, So we're, we're trying to figure out whether or not that's what Murray's going to be. Um, and I don't know that it's a sophomore slump. I just, like, he, he wasn't great I think he's going to be okay. I think yeah. offensively they're going to be just fine. I think defensively they can't stop anybody. Yes, agreed. Like you talked about Vance Joseph. I went back and looked up Vance Joseph's numbers. Vance Joseph was not a very good coordinator in, in the NFL. He just wasn't. Go look yeah, back at it. Maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. Vance Joseph was not good. Did I, did I just assume that because he got a head coaching job? I think so. Maybe so. Like I, I felt like he was better than, uh, than what nope. he has been. but He was not. His defenses not. were not. I'll be I'll be damned. Well, either way, uh, I think I think we both kind of expect the same thing out of the Cardinals this year. I think that those two games that the Cardinals had with the 49ers last year might have been more to do with scheduling and where they fell on the schedule as opposed I agree to with that. Um, 
As opposed to this. I mean, this one, they got the 49ers coming out of the gate. if they keep it close, that's fine. If they cover this number, that's fine. I mean, you know, seven-point numbers in the NFL just don't get busted a lot. I mean, every week you'll just see half the games are going to come down to a final last-second field goal to win or lose it. Yeah. Um, but but with that being said, that I just don't I – th- I think we're putting the cart way before the horse with this team, man. We just are. We're just singing all their praises way too soon. And I, I don't know what they did last year to justify that. And I don't know how they've improved this year outside of H- Hopkins is amazing. I think Hopkins is unbelievable. I also think Hopkins is really good because he puts in the work with the quarterback and he hasn't been able to do that this offseason. That's true. That I is think true. in time that could be an unbelievable duo. I don't I don't know that that's the case this year, this fast. Yeah, especially not in game one. Yeah. Against this defensive front? Come on, man. No, I just I don't buy it. I don't buy it at all. I'm gonna I'm gonna take the uh the 49ers there. I'm guessing you're doing the same thing, seven. Yes, sir. All right, let's move on. We are jumping into the last three. You can get them at games. six and a half, by the way, if you want to just actually give us the better number. Well, let's let's do that. Let's do the six and a half. I didn't want to. Why are you not shopping numbers around here, Gary? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's move to Sunday night football, and then we got two Monday night games. Sunday night football, you got the Dallas Cowboys going all the way out to California where everything is shut down and everything is on fire. And the Rams are a three-point underdog to the Cowboys to start things off with. I think that's across the board, right? Yep, three across the board. And and you can get plus odds basically everywhere. If you want to take the Cowboys minus three, you got a 53% of the wagers coming in on the Cowboys right now. I, I mean, look, I think Mike McCarthy is a fantastic coach. I think the Cowboys have talent. I think they've got a ton of offensive talent. I don't think that the Rams are great on defense. they got two really good dudes. Two, and, and I don't know that Jalen Ramsey is really a really good dude, but I I think that the Cowboys are going to be able to put up points here. And, you know, we'll see what the Rams do with uh, with Akers and, and whoever else. I mean, Cooper Cup is back and all this. I Maybe they're going to be fine. Like, I trust Sean McVay to be able to have a game plan in to keep them in the ball game. Um, but I, I like the Cowboys here. I'm going to take the Cowboys minus the three. And, you know, I... I'm still in wait and see mode on the Rams because I just I don't like how this team is built. I don't believe in the Rams. I'm not a big Rams fan, but I'm taking the points here. I think this Cowboys team has been smelling its own shit all off season. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you I think they're really right. good offensively. We still play two sides of the ball in the NFL. True. This is not the Big 12. I know you play in Texas, all right, and your boys in Texas don't like to play defense. Okay, I understand that. But you got to play defense, you're going to come to the NFL. Okay, yeah. No, I, I see that. I see that. I, I think the Rams' offense is going to look really good. I don't know that they are really good, but I think they're going to look really good. And I think they're going to be able to score at will. I think you got a lot of things that are, are, that are going to go in their favor when it comes to clock management, controlling game flow, keeping it close. I get a three-point head start, I'll take it. I, I can understand that. So, and I will take uh, I'll take the Cowboys. We will move on. Let's talk about Monday night. And good gracious, we're going to open up 6:15 p.m. Central Time, God's time zone, with the Pittsburgh Steelers traveling to the New York Giants, where again I believe everything is shut down, and the Giants are a six-point underdog at home, and uh, you can get it at five and a half at one spot, but it's it's pretty much six across the board. Sixty-four percent of the tickets. On the Steelers, and the line has gone from the Steelers minus three and a half all the way up to six. Now, yes, the Steelers it should be the better team, right? Uh, Matt Miller jumps in and said, as a Broncos fan, the last day and a half has been depressing. Uh, yeah, I can believe that. And we'll we'll get to the Broncos here in a minute, but whew, yeah, that was a uh, that sucked yesterday. That sucked. But uh, but for the Steelers and the Giants, I'm gonna I'm gonna take the points. Like, I, I'm going to take the Giants plus the six here. I don't know what Roethlisberger looks like, but I know what's behind him is is pretty much atrocious. Uh, I do like the Steelers' defense, and the Steelers have got weapons. You know, you got James Conner coming back from injury and all that kind of stuff, but I I, I think this is going to be a really close ball game. I think it's going to come down to a field goal. I, I think the Steelers win, but I, I think the Giants can, uh, can keep this thing close. I, I mean, who knows? I, I don't like Joe Judge. I don't like what they did with their coaching staff, and and I don't see where they've really improved talent wise. Um, you know, Saquon Barkley is not going to be injured this go round, so maybe that's something. 
But I, you know, I think it'll just be a normal, close NFL ball game on a Monday night at home for the Giants, and uh, and I think the Steelers win by field goal. So I'll, I'll take the Giants with the with the plus six. So I'm going to teach everybody about something about foreseeing problems before they happen. Okay, this is a very important thing. All right, right now, I do not believe the Steelers to be a very good football team. Okay, I think their defense is really good. Getting an older Ben Roethlisberger back off of an injury, I do not think improves that offense any more than he looked the first two games of last year, where I believe they put up zero points. So, with that being said, I'm going to tell you, you are about to be sold a bill of goods that is just false. You're going to be you're going to be put a false god in front of you. Do not worship it. Steelers are going to come out and they're going to beat the shit out of the Giants. This offense is going to look amazing. Everybody is going to spend a week singing their praises. The Steelers are back, baby. This might be the worst defense in the NFL out of all 32 of them. They're going to go up against an offense that I think has a lot of talent, but it's coached by two of the biggest morons to ever coach a football team. Okay? So, with that being said, the Steelers are going to whoop their ass in this game. Next week, do not buy into the hype. Do not let all the analysts come out of the woodworks and tell you the Steelers are back, baby. They're Super Bowl bound. They are back. They're going to go to the playoffs. Ben is healthy. Their Juju looked great. No, 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 no. It's all false. It's all the mirage. It's all fool's gold. Don't fall for it next week. Don't do it. Whatever the number is, just bet against them next week. Don't even know the game. Hadn't looked that far ahead. Doesn't matter. Just bet against them because – everybody's going to be blowing smoke up their ass after this game because uh, they're going to win. They're going to cover after we, that. They are going to fall so hard because they're not really a good football team. It's the Broncos at the Steelers in week two. Then they're going to get their ass kicked. So the Broncos are going to come in. They're going to kick their ass. I mean, you might be right. You might be right. Cause this is not a good offense. Ben Roethlisberger is not better after taking a year off recovering from an injury in which he wasn't good before he had the injury. After that, so this is the Steelers' opening schedule, by the way, at the Giants, then Broncos, Texans, at the Titans, Eagles, Browns, at the Ravens, at the Cowboys, Bengals. Uh, let's see. Man, at it's the like Gi- I mean, every yeah. other game they play a terrible defense, and every other game they play a pretty good defense. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. Uh, I never – would have imagined that I would have seen the day where you and I would have taken opposite sides on a Steelers bet and that you would be the one How betting on How on earth the do you think the Giants are going to be good at football? I don't know that they're going to be good at football. Jason but Garrett, Freddie's Soup Kitchens, what are we doing? I, I Like I said, I don't like what the Giants what have done. What are we doing? But I also don't like the idea of Roethlisberger coming back from an injury, and I don't think that they are no, going to take him out of the ball game. No, but that defense is slow. That defense is soft. He, he's going to look amazing, and everybody's going to puff him up. He's going to do it on Monday night. He's going to spend the week getting blown, and after that, he's just going to fall off a damn cliff. You might be right. You might be right. Uh, let's see. Damian said Steelers are going to hit and run through the Giants. Yeah, maybe so. That's maybe right. so. Uh, so, last game of the, of the TV slate and whatnot, and Matt Miller jumps in with this. Uh, it is the Titans minus two. At the Broncos, and I believe it's, it's opened up as the Titans plus three. Yeah, and and then of course the and and you can get it at two and a half as well in a couple That's of spots an now. Unbelievable line movement, uh, just a ridiculous line movement in the NFL. Yes. Von Miller, of course, going out that shifted things a lot from yesterday. Is Von Miller worth this. six points? No, Lord, no, absolutely Jesus not. Christ. Um, let's see. Uh, Matt jumps in. Uh, Matt Miller. Said Broncos are twenty eight six and one all time week one. I think that's because most teams are not in shape the first couple of weeks. Imagine how bad a shape teams are in right now. Yep, hundred hundred percent. You're giving away all the answers, Matt. You're giving away all the answers. Yep. That's exactly right. There's one team that's going to have home field advantage this year. One, and that'd be the Broncos. Because when you go up and you play in five thousand feet of altitude. Okay, they call it mile high, but they're lying because a mile is only like 3,000-something 3, 3, feet. It's like a mile and a half over that. This is, this is not going to be close. I, I like the Texans a lot, Titans a lot. You know that. We yeah. like to, I say it's not going to be close. I think the Broncos are going to win this game. I think their offense is really good, much improved. I think their defense is going to be just fine. All right? yes. They're not going to be great. Losing Vaughn is massive, massive problem. All right? 
But I think other guys are going to step up. I don't know if Chubb's going to be healthy. We, you know, we'll have to find that out. I'm going to tell you this. Tennessee's not going to look like Tennessee looked at the end of the year last year. Tennessee's going to look a whole hell of a lot they looked like in the middle of the year, where it's just a lull. But Well, but uh, hold exactly on, hold on. Right. Mid- middle of last year, the Titans were, I mean, they were running on all cylinders, man. They were They were banging them out because Tannehill had... I mean, just a ridiculous QBR. Like they, their offense was on fire middle of the year last year. However, Tannehill got that contract. I don't think he is nearly as good as what they paid him. No and, chance. And in this spot, I mean, I I like Denver. Um, are we are we taking I just the two and a half? Believe all those points. I can't believe the point move that much. I can't believe it. That just shocked me. I, yeah, I don't understand. I came in ready to bet on the Titans. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing. That's insane. That's no. just insane, and the altitude is a killer. It's an absolute killer. These dudes think they're going to go up there and run like crazy. They're about to get gassed like nobody's business. Yeah. Uh, Matt Miller said Chubb's on a pitch count early to make sure that he's good. Damian comes in and said Titans 28-14. to 14. No chance. Uh, I mean, it, you know. This is a week that I would not start Henry. Yeah, I, I, would, not, I would not roll that. I wouldn't. So, But that's just me. All right, so with that said... Let's go ahead and end the show.